This is the network service of the NDA. who has done what and who is doing what in our world, the art world. My name is Chioma Pokbara. Let's start right away. Seven artists, different ages, different backgrounds, but they have same ideas. They decided to put up a group exhibition which they titled Fresh Vernacular. In a nutshell, it is an exhibition on contemporary Nigerian art. Let's meet the artists. Cyril Oma is an upcoming artist. He obtained an ordinary national diploma in fine art from Yaba College of Technology. He employs motifs and symbols in his work. This piece actually is uh, a rendition of the Neon Institute. And um, the whole idea of the work, trying to appropriate a master, an already established artist to pass a critical message across. There is an issue of what is a masterpiece and what is not, or what determines who is a master and who is not. Adewale Fatai obtained a higher national diploma in painting from Yoruba College of Technology. He draws inspiration from Yoruba culture. This is actually one of um, uh, four pieces set of body of works. It's actually titled Face It. It's a Face It series. It's actually um, a body of work referencing um, identity uh, reclamation and um, how foreign uh, culture, subculture has influenced our, our values, our tradition, and our most cherished um, African values. The work of Uthman Wahab challenges the ideals of beauty. To him, there's a cultural pressure on the African creativity and so he goes back to the past for inspiration. The work is titled um, Victoria Lagos. Nigeria never existed until 1914. It was an era where Nigerians you know, tend to like have to look like um, the, the West you know, because you know, there is this awareness that it is going to become a country and there is a colony in Lagos and um, it tends to like uh, want to look like the West and at the same time they still want to claim their identity. Soji Adeshino has forged a distinctive impasto style through radical experimentation with materials and techniques. This body of work is uh, titled the postage stamps. Actually that's what they are about. But really what brought me to this body of work was to speak about how the manipulation of uh, our identity and our and our sovereignty was, was used against us by the British and the, and the people who colonized the country within that period. And um, even if you have to look at it, until Benin made a case concerning who makes or who designs our stamps. Stamps that were carrying the Nigerian name were actually commissioned to British or American artists. Whereas artists in Nigeria were overlooked. Moody Yahaya is a photographer. He describes himself as a cultural activist. In his work, he searches for the new African post colonial space and identity. Before Western canon of art came, there has been a lot of indigenous artistic expression. However, we are not we are where we are because the world has moved. But it doesn't mean that we cannot look back to the past and say, okay, our forefathers got it right here, and this can be added to Western art, and this can be added to the way we see. Um, the only way you can sell yourself, as it were, to another culture is by defining and understanding who you are. 
Ndidi Dike is a prolific sculptor and painter. Her work reevaluates traditional aesthetic elements, which includes the function of line and shape, use of color, perspective, and the role of materials. The title of this place is Commit Plot, and it's about the issue of uh, non renewable resources. Um, as we all know, uh, acrylic is actually a byproduct of petroleum, and so I'm talking about the different issues that one uh, encounters with regards to the environment, degradation, the issue of consumerism, and the whole uh, conversation around the grab for natural resources in Africa. This group of artists are interested in provoking intellectual discourse on the subject contemporary Nigerian art. The Bunguru Collective is a collective that has ambitions of returning back to original artistic expression and without ex isolating itself from the modernist or postmodernist art movement. So in other words, it is about taking what is ours and inculcating it in a hybrid artistic expression of what is now. Fresh Vernacular's exhibition is titled, has showcased young and established artists who are forward thinking in their approach to art. Every year we look for new and upcoming artists and uh, we have decided um, to move in a new direction now which is based on contemporary Nigerian art. And we're moving away from aesthetic arts and we're moving towards video arts and performance arts and even multimedia. And um, we have a new residency program that we're doing um, in which um, a very well-known artist, you know, masters in their art, are now here to mentor our new and upcoming artists. These artists argue that art appreciation is not motivated by beauty alone. To them, contemporary Nigerian art must serve other purposes for it to remain relevant in modern society. Deep thinkers, where them guys still talking about contemporary Nigerian art. An art patron took it upon himself to see the documentation of the works of 70 of our artists who live with us in the country. The book covers Nigerian art in the last 25 years. The launch witnessed a large turnout. Take a look. Contemporary Nigerian Art in Lagos Private Collections is a 300-paged book which covers the pre-independence, independence and post-independence periods in Nigerian art history. It's never been done before. No one has done it. And we need a lot of documentation of what is contemporary Nigerian art, that is art uh, that has been produced in the last 25 years. We also need information about these works of art in terms of their production, in terms of their medium, in terms of the artist and the year of production. In two and a half years, different art collectors in Lagos were visited for this documentation to be done. Two traditional genres are celebrated here. They are painting and sculpture. We have to cover sculptures and paintings because those ones are easily recognizable. They are the, they are the commonest forms of artworks that are, you know, that are collected. Photography has made a start, but photography is not widely collected. We couldn't cover any, everything, so now we have to do other works to cover other forms. That's not us, somebody else, but it needs to be done. The book reveals changes in art forms over time and the forces that influence the Lagos art market. The book is divided into two parts. The first part has four critical essays by Professor Dele Jegede, um, by um, Jess Castellotti, by Tobena Okosa, and by Sami Olagbaju. And each of them take a different aspect of art collecting and art in Nigeria. So it gives a very good critical sort of background and insight into the development of art in Nigeria. 
Um, the second half of the book just has pictures, pictures by the various artists, and it's divided into three classes of artists. The pre-1965, pre-independence, independence artists, 1965 onward, uh, 1965 onwards, and then the post-independence um, artists. Only Nigerian artists who are resident in the country have their works documented in this book. Very, very few collectors, if any, in Lagos have works produced by Nigerian artists currently based abroad. If they have any work, they bought it by the time when the, that artist was based here. Many collectors, critics and scholars made useful inputs in this book. My presence uh, underscores the principal thesis of the book, that there is an adverb in the national of Vegas, which has become a home of the in various aspects of our lives. Some of the artists expressed how happy they are at being documented. It's an exciting feeling, but I'm not somebody who is driven by self-glory, so I, I, it's good, it's a good feeling. It's a privilege for me in the sense that um, up-and-coming Nigerian artists, both born, the ones existing and the ones that are yet to be born, who have an opportunity to read about us in the future. It's a privilege for, for my work to be part of this uh, collection uh, because I mean there, 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 are, there are a lot of better artists out there. You know, so um, I think it's uh, it's a good thing, you know, that um, a Nigerian art is is uh, it's uh, beginning to be documented. This book portrays a generation of Nigerian artists whose views of the society are represented through art in diverse media and styles. One wonders if there couldn't have been no better way of making the public know about such artists. If you do a book, then people can have access to it. It's, much, it's easier to disseminate in schools, colleges, among other artists, and so on and so forth. Things are really looking out for the artists. And to make sure that none is left behind, here are some tips. Many interesting works are not properly documented, neither by the collector, and this is bad, but in some cases the artists themselves do not know what they have produced, when they produce it, what title, what dimensions, what media, to whom they insult it. So there is need for artists to document their work better. They must produce more, must produce better works, must produce larger works, must produce works of of a permanent nature, works that will do them credit in future years. If you want to laugh, it's better you laugh to the radio. <laughs> But it is not more prestigious to be a doctor than to be an artist. You should do your research on it. I did photography, I taught photography, I do photography. Everything about me is photography. Visual impressions, applauding creativity in the arts. Yes, things are looking up for the visual arts subsector. So, our creative people keep working, keep producing great art pieces. If nobody encourages you, I'm encouraging you today. <laughs> art is interesting. Even young people can't resist the urge to learn the basics of different art forms. Enjoy this report. They are between 5 and 16 years old. They've come to learn the basics of different art forms. They've done um, ceramics, they've done sculpture, and they've done um, paper mache as well. And we've taken them through uh, the basic of drawing, painting, and then they've done uh, what I call creative thinking technique. But then you talk to them in the morning and just have a discussion with the children. You want to know want to broaden their minds and then let them think out of the box. In their words, they describe what they've learned. 
Today we make cards by painting on like um like painting on rectangle pieces of white paper, cardboard paper and sticking them on a and on a different colored cardboard paper and writing and making butterflies and roses out making butterflies out of paper, cardboard paper and roses out of ribbon. Is a model of a woman with a cape with a cape on her head. It is it's called ceramics. It's called ceramics because it's made out of clay. And there's a difference between ceramics and terracotta. Terracotta is terracotta is useful and it's fat is only fired. But then ceramics is fired and glazed as well. We can make a model of a woman wearing a cape. I see she wants to hide hide her face. Or maybe maybe covering herself from the cold. What did you use to do it? I used clay to do it. Basically the reason why I registered for this program because I want to be an architect. Very soon I'll be getting admission into the university to study architecture. And before I can study architecture, I need to know how to draw. I need to know how to rule, make straight lines, construct, and use my imagination to produce things. Before I came here, I could not even know the pencil or a paintbrush or anything to say I wanted to draw or construct. I hated it. I hated it basically. But coming here, I found out that it was so easy. It was so simple. It was so fun. It was, it was full of fun. Whenever I try to, I see something, I imagine how it looks. I know how everything relates to in terms of proportion, perspective, foreshortening, everything I need to know about drawing and construction. I have actually learned here because before I came here I could not even think of anything that had to do with drawing. Young Art Art Program also provides mentoring for these children. We keep monitoring the children even when they have left us. Some of those who have come for the program and some are in UK. Yesterday I was showing them um, pictures of some of those on the internet from some of our members who are in UK. US, some are studying law, some are studying medicine. So these are the people, they need to look one way or the other, they get connected together. At least this is an opportunity for them to network. So that's what we are doing. They come from different schools as well. So it's not just a program to keep children busy. It's a program designed to develop the children totally, all around. At Young at Art, teaching children is an art. Now we take each child according to the child's needs and the child's personality. The fact that two kids come from the same home does not mean they act the same way or have the same personality. So taking every child is dependent on what the child needs and how the child expresses his or herself. What we do is we teach them the basics and we allow them to express themselves within the rules. Let them understand what art, what um, we're taking them on and let them understand what they need to do. But the expression is completely theirs. We guide them along the way, help them perfect their skills. The essence of this is not to make artists out of them, but it's for them to be able to use their minds and creatively explore and observe their world. This program is only available during the holidays. The organizers are optimistic of a better nation as a result of what these children are learning here today. When we talk about the environment, how to keep the environment clean, these uh, children, when they grow up, some of them are going to be medical doctors, engineers, lawyers, and some of them are going to be in government as well. We are talking about the environment. And some of these things are the things that need to be done to keep the environment. And then uh, these children, we, 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 the program is not designed to make them artists. Some of them want to study architecture. Some of them want to study engineering. Some want to be lawyers. Some want to be singers. One of them told me that she wants to be a singer. She sings very well and she knows, she knows how to write as well. So they, whatever the area of life they want to go into, this is just a way of preparing them. And they are working with a group as well. You don't do things alone. You do things in a community. You're going to work with some people and that's exactly what is happening here. To laugh, it's better you laugh to the radio. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
going into arts is just going after my passion. When I work, it's, I enjoy my work. It's almost like a to me. But it is not more prestigious to be a doctor than to be an artist. You should do your research on it. I did photography. I talk photography. I do photography. Everything about me is photography. Visual impressions. Uploading creativity in the arts. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, Biondo Molayo. Thank you, young people. And thank you, parents. Well, that wasn't a subtle way to compare them to become artists much later. The essence of that workshop is to help them learn basic things about life through art. Okay, we've actually come to the end of today's program. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. My God's Grace will be here next week. My name is Chioma Okwara. Be creative with all you do.